What's going on guys and welcome back to part four of the ultimate guide to Brockhampton. First of all, I want to thank you guys so much on the awesome support that I've been getting on the last three videos all about Brockhampton. I'm not going to lie to you guys, I totally forgot who I said I was going to cover in the last video, but I'm going to go ahead and jump into part four, which is going to be all about Romil Hemnani. So, besides being known for like those tremendous eyebrows, uh, Romil Himnani is the main DJ or the main producer for Brockhampton. He was born back in April 6, 1995, and honestly, he's probably one of the most charismatic members of Brockhampton, and his production offers a distinctly new direction for hip-hop, which has been heavily inspired by Tyler Creator, Pharrell Williams, Frank Ocean, Kid Cudi, and Kanye West's legendary production. And although he doesn't get as much screen time as the rest of Brockhampton, Romeo brings a tangible energy and enthusiasm to Brockhampton's group vibe that is just super hard to miss. His easygoing personality, charisma, and authenticity makes him a big fan favorite. But besides being a very charismatic figure, Romeo is also probably one of the more active members of Brockhampton on social media. And because of that, he's given us a really cool, accessible window into the group's dynamic. Romil alone actually produced 33 of the 48 songs in the Saturation Trilogy, plus the entire trilogy was recorded right in his bedroom. So if you love the genre-bending sound that makes Brockhampton so unique, you can honestly thank Romil for that production. But moving into Romil's origins a little bit more, he's from a little town in northern Connecticut known as South Windsor. South Windsor is a suburb in the city of Hartford, which doubles as the capital of Connecticut and the hometown of fellow Brockhampton member Don McLennan. And Romil's family is of Pakistani origins, which makes a lot of sense considering the Middle Eastern influences that really shine through some of Brockhampton's music. If you guys want to get a better idea of what I'm talking about, go back to Saturation 2 and make sure to listen to Fight, Chick, and Stupid, and you'll see that Middle Eastern influence I'm talking about. But despite being best known for his work through the Saturation series, uh, Romil did have an early career and life before Brockhampton, but his career really took off with the Saturation trilogy, but he began making a name for himself as early as 2012. Much of Romil's early production was work being done with Kevin Abstract and Don McLennan under the collective known as Alive Since Forever. And unlike members of Brockhampton who attended high school together in Houston, which included Merlin Wood, Matt Champion, and Joba, Romil linked up with the group through online forums, starting with webmaster slash part-time producer Roberto. In 2014, Romil made his full debut as a producer on Kevin Abstract's debut album, MTV 1987, and he produced the whole 12 track album in its entirety. Over the years, he's shown an immense amount of versatility for a producer that has only really been around for a couple years. So eventually, the group moved together to San Marco, Texas, where Romil would release his first EP, Memorial Day, with Kevin Abstract and Bareface under the monocle, No Wi Fi. At this time, the group pretty much started slowly coming together member by member, and in an interview, Romil states, We lived in Texas for a year and we worked on a lot of music. We spent that time getting better at what we do, building a group chemistry, figuring out how to be a boy band, because there's so much work prior to moving in together that was done over the internet. Text messages, email, whatever, and that's how we would make songs. So we had to learn how to work together in a new way, and that's what we spent that year doing. Ultimately, Romil's role in Brockhampton is that he really personifies a lot of what the music brings to the table. Romil's really good at personifying a DIY attitude, dedication to self-improvement, and an experimental approach that spills into everything that Brockhampton does. Ultimately, Romil is the chief architect of Brockhampton sound and has served the same for a large portion of Kevin Abstract's solo work and the group's early work as Alive Since Forever. I would say that Romil really conjures genre fusion beats with a lot of grape death. They rise and they fall, they get serious, they get dark, they get bright. No matter what direction he takes, Romil's really good at adding his own flavor, his own touch to Brockhampton's sound, while at the same time giving a lot of credit to the influences that, you know, he really follows. And Romil has built a lot of these tracks with a variety of instruments and software, but his favorite is known as the Mellotron, which is an early forefather of the synthesizer. And if you guys don't know what the Mellotron looks like, I'll go ahead and include a little clip of Paul McCartney showing how it works. It's on the front of one of our records, which went, like, went like this. So if I had to talk about Romil's production style a little bit more, I would say it's somewhere between alternative rap and anti-pop, but his sound really defies a lot of labels. 
he shows his ability to really be dynamic and to adapt to whatever sound Brock Hampton is starting to brainstorm. Not only that, but it has evolved through albums, songs, and sometimes individual verses. Romeo really strives to showcase and support each individual vocalist on the tracks as best as possible, rather than simply try to create hard beats. And this selfless approach is a big reason why Brockhampton is so unique and why they're so extremely picky about who they work with. In another interview, Romeo states that when we're making music, we are very in sync. We have very similar ears and tastes and we'll hear the songs going in the same direction. That's why I'm very particular about who I work with, because if I can't see it and I don't see the world going the same as you, it's not going to work for me. Even though Saturation 1, 2, and 3 are very similar albums, I would say that they're just as different as they are similar. It's very easy for me personally to tell the three albums apart because each three albums just have their own signature sound that Romeo has managed to evolve over the last couple of months. And the craziest part to me is that Romeo has managed to produce all three albums within the span of a year. So that just goes to show that he was working overtime just trying to pump out each album which only came out within a couple of months of each other. But to give a little bit more credit on Romeo's influences and his early, early origins, uh, Romeo pulls a lot of influence from a variety of artists, many of who have doubled as producers as well. But the majority of these artists are known for their ability to blend the lines between genre, including hip hop, rock, pop, funk, and soul. Romeo's greatest influence is undoubtedly Pharrell Williams, which is the king of pop and the architect of everything that was pretty much on the radio back in the 1990s and the early 2000s. But some of the other influences that Romeo draws from include Clips, Kid Cudi, Kanye West, Frank Ocean, Tyler Creator, Nerd, and Rio Gang. If we ever had to explore the idea of Romeo taking a solo career, I would say that he would definitely be the most successful out of everyone in Brockhampton. And that's not to say that Romeo is going to start rapping anytime soon, but honestly, because of the Saturation Trilogy's like, amazing success, I would say that Romeo definitely has kept in contact with a lot of other artists, either that or like a lot of artists have their mind on possibly working with him one day. And honestly, Romeo has shown that he's capable of great things, and even more so, he has shown that he has a willingness to experiment simply for the sake of trying something new. His passion for innovation and depth through simplicity will make him one of the most sought after producers in the industry when the time comes for the group to part ways. I'm very excited to hear what the best days of our lives will sound like because honestly, I think Romeo is going to bring a completely new sound to Brockhampton's image. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe and let me know what is something about Romeo that you really appreciate? Is there something that I missed or is there something that you know about him that I didn't mention in the video? Let me know down in the comments. Not only that, but what kind of direction do you think the best days of our lives will go in? Uh, do you think Romeo will stick to the saturation sound, or can we expect something completely different at this point? Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate all the support throughout the series, and I will see you guys in the next video.